Kokanna is a place you go to when you're tired of Goa's over capitalism and partying. In this video, you'll see Kokanna like never before, and some of its hidden side. Kokanna's essence, I mean, the beauty, is that it's very natural. Don't look at me like that. I'm <laughs> getting conscious. Legit. Kokanna is a beach town three hours away from Goa. At least that's the Google Maps definition. But it actually is. So it's a small coastal town where there happen to be more foreigners than Indians, and somehow that's a weird USP slash flex for a lot of Indian destinations. You know, somehow it's managed to keep both the local and western side alive. Kokanna has three categories of people living in it: the locals, majorly Brahmins; the foreigners who've settled here; and the tourists, of course, majority of whom come to Kokanna for temples, and the others like you and me who come to enjoy the vibes. Beautiful. Gokarna is mentioned in the Mahabharata and Ramayana. It's almost like Shiva's home. Same equivalence as Kailash Parvat and Varanasi. More about that later. So I'm at Koti Deetha, which is a destination often overlooked by people here. But what if I told you that this is how it looked like at night? Tourists probably don't like it as much because, well, it's not a beach. To understand better, I met with Uppi, the modern monk of Gokarna, to shed some light. Gokarna, me foreigners pehle aate the, pandra, bish saal se. To humko wo unka angrez baat karna pe kuch seekha liye the. Mera sister, mera brother, wo sab unko tehna seekha diye. Aur unka food humko acha lagta tha wo. Acha. Veggies aur chocolates leke aate the humko. Kuch to gift leke aate the. Three months aur reh ke. हमारा फैमिली के साथ रहते थे तो ये सब एक मस्त मेमोरीज है यू थिंक गोकर्णा का जो एसेंस है मतलब जो ब्यूटी है वो थोड़ा नीचे जा रहा है कि अभी लोग जा रहे हैं पर गोकर्णा गोवा बनने के लिए हमको मन नहीं है तो वर्ड In the 1960s, when the Western hippies came to India and introduced budget travel, they settled in Goa, and some of them made their way to Gokarna, which is why you'll see a lot of Western travellers here. Somehow, it's managed to keep both the local and Western side alive. So, if there's anything that differentiates Goa from Gokarna, it is this temple right here. It is called the Mahabaleshwar Temple. It's like the spiritual hotspot of Gokarna. So there's like a very strict fashion rule if you want to get inside. Women have to strictly wear Indian attire. Men have to be shirtless with a lungi. Otherwise, the fashion cops here would not let you in. And I think I passed the check. I think my outfit is giving very ancient temple chic vibe, and I love it. Asked a few locals and found out that this festival is called Deepotsava, which happens in the month of Kartik, which is this month specifically in the Hindu calendar. From what I can see is that there are many diyas lit over here, everywhere. There's a boat that occasionally goes by. There was puja happening there, and there were people singing songs. There was swastika there. I think all in all, it just looks really pretty. So since Gokarna is a coastal town, its beaches are pristine. But it's also because it's part of the Arabian Sea. It doesn't have the bluest of waters, but it's a fair share of blue. So there are six main beaches in Gokarna: Main Beach, Kudle, Om, Half Moon, Paradise, and uh, Belkin. And fun fact: all of these beaches have something unique going on for them. For instance, Main Beach has a very spiritual vibe going on because it's close to the entry of Mahabaleshwar Temple. Half Moon Beach is called Half Moon because well, it's shaped like a half moon. 
and Dom Beach, which is where I am right now, is actually, get this, shaped like a gnome. So I'll show you one of these beaches once we actually get, a, get along going on the beach trek. Let's go. Starting my trek at Om Beach, which is to be honest my personal favorite beach. In very simple words, it's because like it's very pretty, it's very calm, it's very serene to the obvious eye. But for me, also on a deeper level, I feel like I can have conversations with this beach, you know. I feel like I connect with this beach beyond just its physical appearance. And uh, traveling does that, you know, to be honest. I'm so glad that it happened to me with this beach. So this is by far the best view in all of the trek. The trek between Om Beach to Half Moon Beach is so beautiful because you have this small narrow lane between these between just the sea and the mountain which is through which is where we go through to get to the next beach but it looks so beautiful because you're just like if you look at this place, it's almost steep but not completely, which makes it makes you feel like you have like this front row ticket to the entire sea. I feel like it's so cool. So this is it. We reached Half Moon Beach. So this is Half Moon Beach. This is the only beach that can be accessed via trekking and of course now via boat. Unlike Paradise and Ohm and all the other beaches. Now this is also the smallest beach of all the beach uh, in the beach trekking area. I don't know if you can tell, it's just from there to here. That's how small it is. And yeah, it's very quiet, it's very silent. The last time I came here, there was no cafe, no shack. And now we have one right there. So yeah, it's getting commercialized, I think. It's picking up. So finally arrived at the last beach, which is called Paradise Beach. Technically, there's one more beach after this, it's called Belican, but, uh, which is also part of the beach trek, but we're only covering till here. Paradise Beach is known for two things. One is adventure sports, which is, you know, including all the water sports as well as stargazing and camping in the night. And it's also known for phytoplankton, so like bioluminescence, the blue thing that you see glow in the night. Yeah, it's popular for that. One more interesting thing you need to know about Paradise Beach is that it's often marketed as like, oh, it's an offbeat beach. In case you want to skip the crowds, I'd advise coming here in the weekdays or just really early in the morning. Another really popular thing to do in Gokarna is sunset gazing. It's so gorgeous with the cliff and the sea right beside. Watching the sunset fully set is fully bucketless moment. And when you go 60 to 70 kilometers away, you reach Yana Cave. Yana Caves are like these prehistoric, really cool looking caves with very little history available in the internet or anywhere else to know about it. And uh, if you stay here for longer, uh, I don't know, it's giving very Hotel Transylvania vibes with the cave formation and the bats and uh, yeah, it's cool. Kokana is more than just beaches, temples and cafes. It's home away from home for a few, where its oceans wipe away people's city homes. It is a very special place for me, but I'm not alone. So many people find home in Gokarna. I hope this video gets you a little closer to Gokarna, whether it's metaphorically, spiritually or physically. But of course, travel sustainably, travel responsibly. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.